From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Cloudflare outage impacts crypto exchanges. On Tuesday, Cloudflare suffered a widespread outage affecting services of a large number of its customers, including Shopify, League of Legends, Discord, Feedly, DoorDash, and NordVPN. The outage also affected several major crypto exchanges, including OKX, Bitfinex, and FTX, prompting OKX's CEO to tweet a plea for, quote, Web3 alternative in the future, end quote. Cloudflare had most services back online within two hours and has not yet disclosed the cause of the incident. Biden signs a pair of cybersecurity bills. On Tuesday, President Biden signed into law two bipartisan bills that will aim to enhance cyber coordination with state and local governments and strengthen the federal cyber workforce. The first bill will enable CISA to offer state and local authorities access to upgrade digital security tools and procedures and will also bolster the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center to help prevent and respond to cyber incidents. The second bill establishes a rotational cyber workforce development program across government agencies in an effort to better compete with the private sector for cyber talent. 7-Zip now supports Windows Mark of the Web security feature. 7-Zip has finally added support for the long-requested Mark of the Web Windows security feature. In 7-Zip 22.00, Windows adds a special MOTW identifier to files downloaded from the internet or other computers. Windows will display a warning message to users attempting to open such files. If the user opts to proceed, Microsoft Office will open the file in read-only mode and disable macros. You can check a file for Mark of the Web by right-clicking it in Windows Explorer and viewing its properties. Microsoft Patch Tuesday Part 2 On Tuesday, Microsoft released out-of-band updates to address known issues in Azure and Microsoft 365 on ARM devices. Microsoft's June 2022 Patch Tuesday updates are believed to have caused the issues which affect services including Azure Active Directory, VPN, Teams Desktop, OneDrive for Business, and Outlook Desktop. Microsoft said the updates will be automatically installed via Windows Update and can also be downloaded and installed manually via the Microsoft Update Catalog. And now, we'd like to thank today's episode sponsor, Optiv. Modernizing your identity control plane from AD to the cloud is complex. Ralph Martino, who is leading the Identity and Access Management Group for Optiv, discusses what challenges CISOs are facing in today's ever-changing climate, increasing security, decreasing risk, and lowering cost. Learn more at www.optiv.com forward slash IAM dash Microsoft. Icefall flaws impact thousands of exposed industrial devices. Four Scout researchers published a security report detailing a set of 56 operational technology vulnerabilities referred to collectively as Icefall. The bugs span across 10 vendors and enable remote code execution, compromised credentials, firmware and configuration changes, authentication bypass, and logic manipulation. Notably, 74% of vulnerable products had previously been certified for their security. Forescout noted, quote, many of the vulnerabilities are due to insecure by design nature of OTs, end quote, adding that there were a number of flawed authentication schemes. Impacted customers have been advised to apply available bug fixes through firmware upgrades or segment OT networks and monitor activity while they wait on a fix. Toddycat targets exchange servers with new malware. Kaspersky researchers have discovered a new APT group dubbed Toddycat targeting Microsoft Exchange servers. Toddycat leverages two formerly unknown tools the researchers called Samurai and Ninja. Samurai is a passive backdoor, while Ninja allows multiple operators to collaborate on a target machine simultaneously. In December 2020, Toddycat began compromising exchange servers in Taiwan and Vietnam, but between late February and early March of this year, The group expanded its tactics by abusing the proxy logon vulnerability to compromise multiple organizations across Europe and Asia. The researchers noted that Toddycat's motives appear to be geopolitical in nature, with a focus on governmental and military targets. Overconfidence in API security leaves orgs at high risk. Radware's 2022 State of API Security Report reveals a sharp increase in API usage due to reliance on cloud infrastructure and other inter-system communications. 
While 92% of those surveyed believe they have adequate protection for their APIs, 62% admit a third or more of their APIs are undocumented, leaving organizations vulnerable to cyber threats such as database exposures, data breaches, and scraping attacks. Additionally, half of respondents indicated their existing tools provide only partial or minimal API protection, highlighting that cybersecurity leaders may have a false sense of security when it comes to their APIs. Michelle McLean, vice president at Salt Security, said the findings reinforce that API security is vastly underprioritized and that the time is now to turn the dial and incorporate adequate solutions as old tool sets are not enough. Russian accused of hacking NATO think tank. The attorney general has issued an arrest warrant for the Russian hacker Nikolaj Kozichek, who is accused of carrying out a cyber espionage attack against a NATO think tank in Germany. Kozichek hacked at least two NATO systems in 2017 and installed a keylogger to spy on the organization. German investigators believe that Kozichek, who is still at large, is a member of the Russia linked APT 28 group, aka Fancy Bear. And that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines, but just a reminder, this week there will be no Super Cyber Friday because instead we're going to do Super Cyber Friday Tuesday edition on June 28th at 2.45pm Eastern during Living Security's Breaking Security Awareness Virtual Conference. Our topic will be Hacking the Boardroom, How CISOs and Security Program Owners Can Better Approach and Get More Buy-In from the Board. Users can go to livingsecurity.com and click at the top of the screen to register. And remember, our dramatic finale for our Capture the CISO show is now available. This competition has been a thrill each week, and the final round did not disappoint. If you're interested in hearing CISOs evaluate vendor products on innovation, ease of deployment, and solving a need, then you really need to check out the end of Season 1 of Capture the CISO. Check it all out at CISOseries.com or in your podcast app of choice. Thank you for listening. I'm Sean Kelly, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.